Hello there. In this video we're going to continue our discussion of fractional calculus, in particular towards the Riemann-Liouville definition of the fractional differential integral. So recall the fractional differential integral of Riemann-Liouville type is given by i base points ax of order alpha of some function f of x is going to be equal to 1 divided by gamma alpha times the integral from a to x of x minus t to the power alpha minus 1 times f of t dt. In this video, we're going to be exploring a particular type of function, namely the exponential function, namely e to the x, and all the variations of it. And we're going to discuss how to find the fractional different integral of that particular function. All right, so we're going to be looking at the function f of x is equal to e to the x. And then we're going to sort of extend that to e to the ax later. So let's figure out what the fractional uh, integral of e to the x is of any order alpha. So we know the derivative, second derivative, third derivative of e to the x is just e to the x. So maybe the half derivative, the three quarters derivative, the pi derivative of e to the x will also be e to the x. So this proof is going to sort of illustrate um, whether that is the case or not. So the alpha integral ax alpha of e to the x is going to be equal to 1 divided by gamma alpha times the integral from a to x of x minus t to the alpha minus 1 times e to the t dt. So in order to delete any arbitrary constant c, we're going to be taking our base point a to be equal to minus infinity. So this is going to be our definition for the fractional different integral of exponential functions. Uh, and we're going to uh, be assuming that later, uh, when we have a leading coefficient a here, we're going to assume that that is positive. And then we can reverse if we need to. All right, so how are we going to evaluate this integral here? So I'm going to begin by working on this little term here by using a u substitution. I'm going to be letting u be equal to x minus t. So x is going to be a constant as far as I'm concerned since I'm working with an integral with respect to t. Uh, so that means du is going to be equal to minus dt, forcing dt to be equal to minus du. So that's my differential term. So let's work out my limits. So when t is equal to a, which I'm going to be taking to minus infinity, then what is u going to be equal to? So when this is the case, we're going to have u is equal to, um, let's see. So that's going to be equal to x minus a, or x plus infinity. So as I said before, x is going to be remaining to be a constant, a finite constant nonetheless. So x plus infinity is going to be infinity regardless of that number x for which we have. So that means u is going to be infinity in this case. So also when t is equal to x, we're going to have that u is going to be equal to x minus x, which is going to be equal to 0. So our integral from minus infinity to x is going to turn into an integral from infinity to 0. All right, also, since uh, u is equal to x minus t, we're also going to have that t is going to be equal to x minus u. So this sets up our integral for substitution. So then we're going to have 1 divided by gamma of alpha times the integral so a is going to turn into infinity, x is going to turn into 0, and then we're going to have u to the power alpha minus 1 times e to the t, so e to the x minus u, times dt, which is going to be equal to minus du. My negative sign can reverse my integral bounds to the normal uh, orientation, so we're going to have 1 over gamma alpha, times the integral from 0 to infinity of u to the alpha minus 1 times e to the x e to the minus u du. All right, so again, u is our variable of integration. Therefore, we can pull this e to the x out of this integral since it's a constant as far as the integration bounds are concerned. So this is going to be equal to e to the x multiplied by 1 over gamma alpha times the integral from 0 to infinity of u to the alpha minus 1 
times e to the minus u du. So everyone should recognize what this function is. This is precisely the definition of gamma of order uh, gamma of parameter alpha. So gamma alpha divided by gamma alpha is just one. So this is going to be equal to e to the x, and this is going to be true for all values alpha. In general, alpha positive. So that means that means the fractional integral of e to the x is going to be equal to e to the x for all alpha greater than zero, which is nice. So we can, of course, reverse this and say that the fractional derivative of e to the x is also going to be equal to e to the x, and that's going to be true for any alpha greater than zero as well. All right, so that matches our intuition. So now let us bring in a constant uh, into this discussion. So example two, let's consider the fractional integral with base points minus infinity to x, and we're going to now consider e to the uh, ax. So here a is going to be a constant. We have not verified or even discussed whether the chain rule applies as it normally would with fractional operators. So we can't just say, oh, the alpha is going to come down and so on and so forth. So let's test with the Riemann-Liouville definition what this is actually going to be equal to. So from the definition, this is going to be equal to 1 divided by gamma of alpha times the integral from minus infinity to x of x minus t to the alpha minus 1 times e to the at dt. So again, we're going to be using the same substitution, u is equal to x minus t. Uh, everything pretty much stays the same uh, in our integral transformation. So we're going to have that this is going to be equal to 1 over gamma of alpha times the integral from 0 to infinity of u to the alpha minus 1 times e to the a times x minus u times du. So once I do that, I'm going to distribute my constant a to everything. So then this is going to give me 1 over gamma of alpha times the integral from 0 to infinity of u to the alpha minus 1 times e to the ax e to the minus a u du. So a and x is a constant as far as my integration is concerned, so I'm going to withdraw that out. So this is going to give me e to the ax times 1 over gamma of alpha times the integral from 0 to infinity of u to the alpha minus 1 times e to the minus a u du. So this is not quite a gamma function, but more so a stretched version of the gamma function. So I'm going to be doing another transformation. So I'm going to be letting omega be equal to a u. So if that is the case, then that means d omega is going to be equal to a du, which means that du is going to be equal to 1 over a d omega. My integral bounds will not change. It's still going to go from 0 to infinity, assuming that a is a positive constant, which we're going to be assuming in this case. So this is going to be equal to e to the ax times 1 over gamma of alpha times the integral from 0 to infinity. So u, in this case, is going to be a divided by omega. So we're going to have a divided by omega to the power of alpha minus 1 times e to the minus omega times du, which is going to be equal to 1 over a uh, d omega. Oh, wait, 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 wait. So this should be, so u is w omega over a. So this should be reversed. All right, so omega over a. There we go. It's a lot better. All right, so let's rearrange this just a tad bit. So this is going to be equal to e to the ax times 1 over gamma of alpha times the integral from 0 to infinity. So we have omega to the alpha minus 1 over a to the alpha minus 1 times e to the minus omega times 1 over a times d omega. So we have uh, a alpha minus 1 and a, so we have alpha a's on the bottom. So we can withdraw them since they are constants within, with their own right. So I have e to the ax 
all divided by a to the power of alpha times 1 over gamma of alpha times the integral from 0 to infinity of omega to the power alpha minus 1 times e to the minus omega d omega. So we should recognize this integral precisely as the definition of gamma of alpha. So again, gamma of alpha will cancel. So therefore, we're just left with e ax a alpha. So namely, the fractional integral of order alpha of e to the ax is going to be equal to e to the ax all over a to the power of alpha, which, as we should recognize from uh, calculus 2 or integral calculus, this definitely does uh, continue or extend naturally from the standard calculus uh, chain rule problems. So uh, I leave as an exercise to see if you can extend this on your own. Um, and you should be pretty surprised at the results, um, or maybe not. Uh, namely, the alpha th integral of b to the power of, say, a to the x. And again, let's assume uh, that you integrate on the same exact bounds. Let's assume a and b are both positive numbers, so it's the general exponential function. So what do you think that may be equal to? And also, what do you think the fractional derivative of this fractional, uh, or the fractional derivative of this general exponent, what do you think that would be equal to? So remember, what we're pretty much trying to extend is the derivative of a to the x is equal to the a to the x natural log of a relationship to any order alpha. So that's what these properties will extend to. So with that in mind, uh, let us just summarize all the things that we've discussed in this series up till now. So the first thing uh, that we proved via the GL definition is the alpha th integral of x to the nu is going to be equal to gamma of nu plus 1. So gamma nu plus 1 all over gamma nu plus 1 plus alpha times x to the nu plus alpha, or the fractional derivative of order alpha of x to the nu is going to be equal to nu gamma nu plus 1 over gamma nu plus 1 minus alpha times x to the nu minus alpha. So this is what we referred to as the power rule. So that's our power rule. And then in this video we proved that the alpha th integral of e to the eta x is going to be equal to e to the eta x. So e to the eta x all over eta alpha. And also the fractional derivative, which we can easily extend from that property of e to the eta x is going to be equal to eta to the alpha times e to the eta x. So this is our exponential rule. And usually some people uh, combine uh, these expressions. So instead of talking about fractional integrals, uh, so fractional integrals or fractional derivatives, some people don't use these words because, you know, maybe we don't want to, you know, compare to the old derivative and integral properties. Sometimes we just want to create something new. So most of the time we combine these two ideas into a concept for which some people refer to as a different integral. So a different integral of order alpha, if for say. So these are what we call different integral properties instead of derivative properties and integral properties because they pretty much can go in either direction for which we want. So I hope you enjoyed.